Hi, I'm Marlene. I love watercolor and I love sharing it with my students. So nice to see some of you here and others. I'll be working in transparent watercolor. And for those of you not familiar with watercolor, uh, there's a couple of unique properties about it. One is that you can put dark over light, but you cannot put light over dark because it's transparent. The other is we use the white paper as the white. So if I want a white sailboat or a white flower, I leave the paper and paint around it. And there are a lot of different processes. And I'll be showing some of them to you as I paint this. Uh, this is going to be a local scene. It's the Heritage House on Melinda in the Park. It's our little local history museum. And I uh, usually take my own photographs or I work from uh, life on site. These are some photographs that I've taken. And then I develop a composition sketch from the photographs. If I'm painting on location, I'll also do a composition sketch, maybe more than one. So this gets expanded up to the drawing. And I've drawn the house pretty um, specifically because the shape has to be accurate. But the trees can be any way I paint them. I might go outside the lines. So, and with that, I will start. Um, I use the biggest brush I can for as long as I can. So I'm going to paint a sky that would contrast with the oranges and the yellows and the reds of the trees. If I were painting the, sky, the trees darker, I would paint the blue of the sky right over the trees, but I am going to be making lighter trees because of the fall colors. So I'm just, here I'm going over the uh, tree because I know it's gonna be a dark green. And that dark green can go right over the sky color. I'll go right into this area too because this will be dark green. I do paint in little sky holes. Somebody once said it's so the birds can fly through. I always like that. Okay. While that area is drying, I'll go to a, another spot. So I don't disturb that wash. And that color is pretty red down there. So I work all over the painting. I don't just work from top to bottom or left to right. I try to make it as accurate as I can for the area. But I do move things around to help the painting. It gives it a sense of place without worrying about which tree was where kind of like the rough edge here. Little rough edge is nice. Some of these trees are really dark green. Here in California, some trees are being dark green and lush and others are being fall colors and others have lost their leaves. So you've got everything going on all at the same time. I want to make a green that's sort of a muted green. 
I put some orange and some red into it. And I use the brush. I don't feel it's necessary to make every leaf. It's surprising how much lighter watercolor dries. When it's wet, you think it really looks just what you want it to be, and then it kind of dries a lot lighter, and there you are with something not the way you wanted it to be. As the tree goes down, it's usually more shaded, so I'm getting it darker and darker. the further it is from the sun. I do have a sun direction coming from the upper left-hand corner. I usually put a little sun diagram right on my composition sketch so I know where the light is coming from. Otherwise, I forget. But if you wanted to have the light coming from both sides on your painting, you certainly can. Doesn't matter. There's another dark tree over here that will also be um, silhouetting the little cottage, which is really pretty. I'll try and make it a little different. It might be the same kind of tree, but you want to have a little variety. There's the little eye hole. I like this uh, rough edge that's happening. I think the uh, it's so dry in here. I have a lot of colors on the watercolor palette because with watercolor, there's not a lot of time to start mixing the way you can with oil paints. Oil painters can stand there for about half an hour trying to mix the right color. Meantime, the paint stays wet. With watercolor, I want to work into it while it's still wet. So. I have to have all these colors that I can get at immediately. And they all have to be moistened so they're nice and creamy. I might put some darker stuff on that later. Or I like dark against light, light against dark. It makes the, the uh, painting snap. Well, we've got a couple of trees going on in there. A couple of them are going to be very far away, so they're going to be very light, almost purple. When we look at trees, a lot of times we just think green leaves, but when the trees are way out in the distance, they're not really, we don't really see them that way. They kind of lose color when they're back up against the uh, sunlight. Okay. There's a concrete pathway over here, and it's sort of pink looking in the photograph. I'm going to pick up on that and make it a little bit of a gray pink concrete. It's nice to have lots of paint on your palette that you can just mix up in some kind of a neutral. And it's never going to be the same twice because it depends what's on the palette. Mm. 
as I go towards the edge of the paper, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. The eye is attracted to light and you don't want something really light and bright at the edge of the painting because it will attract the light. This is dried kind of lighter than I wanted it to be, but that's okay. And this little tree, I think I'm going to, this will go on top of the um, cottage, so I think I will paint the cottage right now. It's a very pale cream color, which is not going to show up terribly well in the painting, so I'm going to enhance it a little bit and make it a little richer in color. A little bit more golden. It's got some white trim. I can move that gold color right down. Into the tree, because the tree will be darker. Just think dark over light. And there might be some sky holes in that tree, too. The little fences, uh, the railing is white. I like to bring flowers in. It brightens up the painting. Uh, it's not always the way things are there, but it might be the way they wish it were there. I always say, don't make it like my garden, make it like a nice nursery garden. I don't have a lot of patience to paint petals, so I make it sort of quick and dirty, as they say. Some other kind of flowers. I make them up, and then people want to know where did I find that flower. And since those flowers are growing on that side, I'll put some on the other side also. Okay, this tree has lots of red in it. Um, I think it's a magnolia tree. The underneath leaves, underneath of the leaf is quite orange. So I'm going to make some of that show. And then also get some of the green. There's a nice dark hedge behind these flowers that will uh, silhouette the flower beds very nicely. Some of these things I will accent after they're dry. Right now I'm doing wet into wet. The color is melting into the other color with soft edges, and that's always a nice thing. The really dark, dark hedge behind will make everything stand out. And I'm even putting a little magenta into that green I'm mixing green and magenta and blue, making a very cool, dark green. It needs a little bit more greeny green. At some point, I probably should go to my smaller brush. It's kind of fun to see how far I can go with this.
I always say if it doesn't have four legs and barks, but it's colored like a flower, it must be a flower. So I don't have to beat it to death. Again, I'm going out towards the edge, so I'm making, I'm going to make it even darker. Putting in some black with the dark green. Even though I thought this was quite dark, by putting this darker around it, it shows a difference. get back to my other mixture here. Okay, I think I want to start doing my nice big colorful flowers because that's going to be the key to the painting. That's what the painting's really, was what intrigued me. That's what the painting's really about. So some of this green is going to get washed off. And I'll come back to that. OK. The colors of the trees were just gorgeous. I think this was about a year ago when I took these. And that's what really intrigued me to make the painting. I'm going to start out with some gold. Hmm. Got some green on my yellow. That's okay. I'll make one tree golden and have another tree will be red. This one is in front of the other one. And maybe this one a little bit over. Yeah. And put some orange into it. I'll make the other one towards the outside orange with some gold. I forgot to paint the sky up there. Oh my, well. The sky rider is going to have to come flying by again with some spray paint. I don't want that too obvious. And I'll put some other colors in it. This is sort of an earth color. Russet. I'll come back into that with a little bit more uh, color when it dries a little bit more. Right now it's a little bit too wet. Um, the middle tree is going to be a really rich beautiful red. So I'm mixing red with orange and a little bit of a burnt sienna color. Again, I'm going to have to make some variations in it because it would be monotonous to have it all one color. On that side, I'm gonna to have to make it a little bit more golden, just so that I can get a different color against the other one. I'll probably make this one darker. 
Again, I'm following the wet edge and doing wet into wet. Oops, don't use, don't use a dirty towel. Um, I can usually get rid of this with some clean water and I'll be painting right over it anyhow so it's not going to really show. One nice thing about watercolor is you can actually wipe some of it off. So if you make a mistake or you want something lighter, you can just take it right off like that. Not bad. Okay, my paint was getting a little bit too loose, too wet. And then again, as it's going down further, I need to make it darker. When painting, it really pays to exaggerate color because our eyes kind of neutralize what we see. When we see something really really overly bright in the painting, our eyes accept it, that it's, uh, it could be that way. Just kind of moving some of the paint around, sort of little leafy things. This will get much darker. I'm beginning to get a forest in here. Um, I need another tree that's in the far distant. So I'm gonna make another sort of this one. Again, this will outline the house, the little cottage. I do need to um, fix that corner of the sky. and use some of that same nice blue that I used. Luckily, I did not mix a blue. I just, it was pretty straightforward blue. So let's see if I can get it. It's gonna be pretty good. Again, this will dry lighter. So we've got quite a forest growing there. I want to kind of get all the surrounding area and then I'll come back to the cottage. Um, there was some very dark, I'm coming to a smaller brush now. This needs to be resolved. There's some nice greeny grass there. It's nice to have a resting spot that has some calm color on it that isn't all active brushwork. 
So this foreground is going to act as that balance. I could still use my big brush. Okay, we have a nice lawn there. And then, oh, that very dark color, which I'll have to mix again, is right here too. And that was magenta and green and black and a little red. Here I have to start being a little more careful. I'm getting into the smaller areas. That's why I switched to a smaller brush. It's that same hedge coming over on this side. And because there's a white picket railing here, you can see that hedge through the slats. If I remember what the slats look like, they were pretty narrow. Well, again, nobody is going to say, you made the slats too narrow, because I remember and I was there. And I would simply say, from my point of view, they were that size. That's all. I'm trying to get color all over the paper so I can see relationships. This bottom uh, part is the actually the, uh, pave, the asphalt paving. And again, in the photograph, it really looks sort of purple, and I'll capitalize on that idea. I certainly don't want gray. Gray is non-color. So I'm making it just a little bit of a purpley gray. Oops, wrong one, okay. I go for color wherever you can put color in. It's easy to paint something that's totally, totally neutral because the colors mix so beautifully, but it's more fun to put some color in. Okay. All right, let's do the steps. I'm going to pay a little attention to the house now and switch to another brush. It's a flat brush. This was a round brush. And do the steps. They're a brick color, so that's a rosy color, red, more of a red-orange and a little bit neutralized. I'll just paint them all the same color right now, and then I will put some shading on them after they dry for the upright. And they come over here. Again, Part of it can be seen through the railing. And then there's some more garden to do over on this side. And for that, I will use some more of a pink, pink roses. I painted some flowers that only appear in yellow once. I painted them pink in a painting, and the owner of a nursery 
asked me where I saw those because he really wanted to get them. He had never seen those color, that flower and that color before. And I said, you never will. <laughs> so that was a true story. I'll bring some more yellow flowers over here. Oops. When I want yellow paint, I want real yellow. And then I can put the green on top of the yellow because, of course, the yellow is lighter. It's like layering. It's actually called glazing in art. Make some yellow flowers back there. There's a little bench sitting there. That's a nice little touch. When these are dry, I will put some more shading into them uh, and some branches on the tree. Let me do the roof now. That's what I was going to do. There's a nice consistency with some of the colors, the russets and oranges here, 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 and then the roof is also this kind of a rusty red color. And a little bit of it shows here. As I'm painting this dark area, I actually lifted up some of that dark just by putting some uh, water onto it. This side is in shadow, but I will put the shadow over it once it's dry. So beginning to get the house done. I'm going to take some liberties with the window. I like to put lots of color in the windows sort of like a stained glass effect by using all the colors that are in the painting. So, and I'm, it does have white crossbars, but I'm not gonna be able to, oh, I might be able to scratch them out. But there's some, that color, and this be a little bit of this color will come in. some purple. They're like little abstract paintings. They're fun to do. And then you don't have this black hole where the window is. And I'll get some of that sky blue in there. Just doing it wet into wet. And maybe some green. And I think that's a lot more pleasing than than a uh, black window. When the paint is damp, I can actually scrape some of it off to make that white indication of the window. That's enough. Same thing I'll do on the, well, the door is sort of a white uh, blind is on it right now and since I want to make the door darker I'll I'll just put a light neutral in there again I will add a couple of little touches of color Make it more purple. It's so, 
So there's the window and the door, and then the window up on top. In the photograph, the window is the way people normally paint them, just black hole, which, as you can see, I don't like that. Purple, and I'll put some of that russet color in with it. and a little bit of sky color. I just pull all the colors from the painting right into it. It's fun. And some green, because there's a lot of green in the painting. Okay, need to fill in some of this, and then I'll come back to do the uh, more detail on that. One thing I do need to do is make the edge of the tree over here darker. Just so you can see one from the other. Now here, this is darker, so I'm going to make that, even though I can't make it lighter, I can make it a different color. Okay, uh, there's still some green in me to be done. Get some nice fresh green. There's a lot of little plants down here. I'm not going to just suggest foliage shapes is, is enough. I will fill in those white areas. Again, as I go out towards the edge, I make it a little bit darker and duller. Don't want the uh, viewer's eye going off the page to the painting that's hanging next to it. Why should they get all the fun? So I'm just filling in some of these. And it's okay to leave little white specks. That's part of the charm of a watercolor. And it begins to look like a bunch of flowers and a bunch of leaves and what all. Okay. This really needs to be dark and I do want to finish off this area. Um, can make a, again, light against dark. So maybe some of this. It's nice, I have a lot of muddy color on my palette and I can neutralize that green so it's not so vibrant. I don't want it competing with the trees. And then it got pretty dark, that really dark green. Back in here. And that gives me a chance to kind of carve some of the shape of the bottom of the tree because I can put dark over light. I won't go as far as this because I don't want that to continue. There should be a little break there. I can come down into here. Again, they had two benches there, but that does not mean I have to do two benches just because it was in the photograph. And then because it's slats, I need to bring some of that color as though you're looking through and seeing that. 
And I'll just switch to a little area of a lighter green here. While the paint is wet, I can blend the colors together. There should be some nice, rich greenery. Green paint is seldom a natural green. The natural greens are, are mostly have a little bit of neutralized color in them. I'll make them darker towards the edge again. I will vary some of these flowers as soon as all of this other stuff dries. Make a little shadow for the bench. Shadows across the um, sidewalk are always nice. This needs to be darkened. It's way too light. But I can do that because I can put a darker tone over the light. kind of mixing up a lot of the things that I already have on my palette. Um, using purple and burnt sienna, which makes a pretty, very pretty neutral. And then add water and just kind of blend it out. A little texture is kind of nice on it. That looks better. I uh, need to do some uh, detailing or smaller structure on the painting. Let's see, this brush and this brush. Okay. Oh, I need to do the door frame needs to be a dark, kind of a dark green, sort of a muddy green. Well, I've been making a lot of muddy greens, so that's not a problem in this painting. Burnt sienna is good to put into colors to make them a little bit more neutral. I don't know. I'll paint it this way, and then maybe the city can go out and change their door so that it matches to my painting. I have to brace my hand against the paper because I'm doing straight lines. Again, you can see the door through the through there. Okay. It needs to have the other side of the door probably. All right, that's almost believable. I will put shadows on the door, on the uh, house, the whole house. Sh putting shading and shadows really make something come to life. Right now, I need to do the steps so that we can walk up the steps. And they are a little bit more like that. And I counted, I've got the right number of steps. They don't have to change the building now for me. Okay. I've got color all over the painting, but it really needs to be pulled together now. I don't have the trunks in. Um, that's going to mean doing a little bit more detail 
Watercolors can be done pretty quickly, especially if you're out in the blazing sun or the wind. You really don't want to be sitting there a whole long time. So that's uh, a very nice feature of watercolor. All these colors that I have on my palette mix up to make a really nice brown. I will have a few things as though you could see some of the branches through the leaves here and there. It's one nice thing about sky holes. You have an opportunity to put a few little branches in there. Um, I'm not crazy about that one because it's like isolated, but we'll put that in there. Well, well, we'll do the same thing. We'll fill it in so you know it's a tree. I could probably use a smaller brush for this. It would, it would help but let's take a chance. I don't want to get too, too fussy. Little brush, I'll get real fussy. I keep a towel right by my water so that every time I wash my brush off, I take off the excess water from my brush so that my colors don't get too diluted. Kind of blend it in a little bit. We need a little bit more foliage on some of this flowery, flowering bushes. The roses need a little punch of darker. Those are roses. I don't know what kind, but they're roses. I'm doing this very quickly. It's an impression of the area. It's not detailed. There are so many different approaches to watercolor, everything from semi-abstract to photorealism. There's so many different methods you can use. Some of these other examples have, uh, one. that one has line, one of them has stamping and spatter. There's glazing, lifting. There's so many different ways to do a watercolor. You can never get bored. I've been teaching for about 20 years and I have seldom repeated an exercise unless it was by request of the students. And that keeps it so much more interesting for me because I would be very, very bored if I had to be teaching the same way and the same things all the time. I really should use a smaller brush. I'm just mixing up all whatever I got here. I like this darker color for the little twigs and things. So. Some of these, oops, I don't, want, I don't want a dirty color, I want a nice clean color, which is getting harder and harder to do because I've been mixing colors right in my little paint pots. A little bench and then okay now the house is uh, 
I like to exaggerate shadows on the house. It makes for a much more interesting pattern. And because uh, it's, there's a yellow there, I need to use a red, more of a red violet instead of the violet color I would usually use for the shadows. So this side of the house was in shadow. And I just glaze. so that the house is turning a corner. This is a little bit of a raised area. I'll do that. Maybe underneath here. And then I do want to make a cast shadow from the trees, but I'm gonna wait a, f a few minutes till some of that gets a little bit drier. So it's beginning to look structural, but I'm gonna have some cast shadow on that. I need to do the little bench. And it was sort of purpley, grayish, brownish, bluish, greenish, my favorite color. Well, I've got so much dark green there, I think I'll make it a warmer color. More of a brown, kind of a color, russety brown. Oops. And I'll put a little shading on it when it's a little bit drier. Um, I'm going to put some very generalized cast shadows on the building just to break up that surface as though this tree was really just having some shadows on it. And then the other thing I want to do is the side of the roof that goes away from the house, that needs to be in shadow also. Away from the sun, excuse me, away from the sun. So that's made a turn a little bit. And what else? I need to just step back from it for a minute to see what it looks like. And I think it could use a little bit of shading on the uh, this part here. shading on the other end. People ask me, how do you know when a painting is done? And there are three different ways. One is to stop when it's 75% done and you'll find if you wait a day or two, it's really 95% done. The other way is to have somebody else remove your hand. <laughs> and the last way is when the check clears after you've sold it. 
then you know that it, that's three good ways to know when the painting is done. I feel as though the, the house is that color, but it just seems to be a little bit too pale for the rest of the richness of the um, foliage and the flowers. And I am going to glaze it with a little bit more of a golden color. Again, I can go one layer over another if I can find a clean place in the palette and then I think we might be almost finished. I think we would be finished. Okay, that calls for glasses. Yeah, that's more in keeping. What does everybody think? Better? Okay. It's more in keeping with the rest of the painting. And it doesn't matter if the lines aren't straight. We know it's a window. As I said, if it doesn't have four legs and doesn't bark, it must be a window. Uh, one, one more, there's always one more. I think I need that other person's hand to come take, take me away here. Uh, purpley, purpley, browny, bluey color. Yeah, let's see. And I actually need to lift one tiny little spot here. I had it painted the, uh, well now I'm getting that color on there, whoops. I had painted over the arm of the chair, not that anybody really would notice. And it just needs a little sharp detailing. I use a little real e brush. just so you can, so we can see it a little bit more clearly. I really want a dark wherever you are, whatever, whatever you are and wherever you are. as though there's some shadow on that too. And I think for quick painting, that's about all I would do on it. So I think putting it in the mat is going to make a big difference on this painting. <laughs>